The XL Brake Kit is now live on the website and it's the latest in performance and safety products that we're offering for your XL Crazy Cart. This is the product of over two years of testing and prototyping to come up with this kit. What's up everyone? Ryan here from Taxi Garage and today we're going to be going over our XL Brake Kit install. We're going to start off with what you need. Obviously you'd either need a 3 ace ratcheting wrench or a nice 3 ace gun with a 3 ace drive on it. And then we also have a drill this you will need an electric drill whether it's battery powered or plugs into the wall and you will need a quarter inch drill bit to go with that drill and then i know this sounds funny but this is going to come very handy when we install the wheel back into the fork this is the bic pen that we use for aligning the spacer this is an eight millimeter open end wrench and we have a 10 millimeter open end wrench as well we have a 16 millimeter socket we have a 10 millimeter socket, an eight millimeter socket, and then we come back up and we have our centering punch, we have our deburring tool, we have a long Phillips head attachment for our drill, and you can use a hand Phillips head as well, no issues there. And then we also have a myriad of Allen keys that attach to a 3 h drive. This one is three millimeters, this one is a four millimeter Allen, this is a five millimeter Allen, and a six millimeter Allen. And we also have a long extended version of the five millimeter Allen that you'll see is a bit easier to use when installing and uninstalling the factory XL seat. We also have this pick for just doing little detail work when dealing with either the tensioner spring or or the motor harness and we have our snips for the existing zip ties on the chassis and then of course we have our headset tools that allow you to adjust remove and reinstall the headset on your XL fork and then we also have this flathead screwdriver which is another trick that we use alongside with the pick when reinstalling the tensioner on your XL neck this is really all you need to do on the kit and these are all the tools you'll need and you know if you guys have this and you feel confident in using them you're gonna have a great success when installing this kit when you open up your brake kit out of the box you'll notice you have a couple components this is your wheel have with the brake rotor already mounted from our factory exactly where it needs to be. This is going to be the bracket and this allows you to bolt the brake caliper to the factory XL neck. This is the baggie of goods that allows you to route the cables for the brake caliper through the chassis. And this hardware bag allows you to mount the caliper to the bracket. And then we also have some smaller zip ties that help clamp the cable while it's being routed. So what we have here is the hydraulic brake caliper that goes with the brake kit. So it also, it comes pre-bled right out of the box so you don't have to add any fluid or bleed it. It is literally ready to work right out of the box. And I'll demonstrate here. If I pull this lever, you'll see the, the little piece that's filling in the gap where the rotor would be between the brake pads. And you'll see when I squeeze the lever, I can no longer move this. So the caliper is working and the hydraulic fluid is pre-bled. So what we have here is a brand new XL cart right out of the box. And we're going to be doing this install on a brand new factory OEM cart with none of our other parts. So you guys can see clearly exactly how this kit installs. Step one today is removing your factory XL covers and removing this factory seat. So we have a lot of space to work with and we're not fighting with everything. And you guys can use a handheld Phillips to take these apart. It just obviously makes it a lot quicker having a gun. And once your Phillips heads are all unscrewed, you're going to get your five millimeter Allen and you're going to remove the front two bolts of your seat second bolt and then you see the last tool you'll need to remove the covers is a four mil allen and it's these two bolts right here second step we have a three ace gun here with a three ace drive and we're going to be using a six millimeter allen to remove the factory steering wheel 
and you actually don't have to fully unscrew this bolt. It actually just has a wedge just underneath it. So you just loosen it a little bit, tap it down, and you'll find out that the neck actually releases the steering wheel immediately as soon as you do that. This tool is what we use here. This is a bicycle tool. We will be releasing our own tools for these soon, but currently this is what we have or what you could use at home is a set of open-end pliers to get on top of this nut and go ahead and loosen these nuts on top of your factory fork. So I'm gonna spin it until the fork kind of stops spinning. That way it gives me a little bit of resistance to try to unscrew these. And now I've unscrewed the top nut. I'm going to unscrew the second nut. And if all goes well, it should unscrew relatively easily. Now before we go dropping this fork out, we need to make sure we've removed the motor's wiring. We have some snips here. So you wanna cut all of these little ties off the factory chassis. Snipping them all away. Snip that, make sure not to snip the wires. Uh, battery compartment underneath the seat and we snip the wiring that is holding all the wire connectors together. And we can now see that the wires with the blue and the yellow connector are what we need to unplug. And of course, once we get this unplugged, you can go ahead and fish it out of the battery box under here. Once all of your connections are free from this neck, you can go ahead and tilt your factory XL up off of the fork. Slide it out from underneath and rest your XL back to the floor. Step three. Now, we've just removed our XL fork. You will notice that there was a set of bearings still sitting on the neck. And as you can see, they're very easily dropped or lost. Make sure you save it and set it aside somewhere safe because this will be reused on install. And we're going to remove the chain guard. It takes a Phillips. You're gonna remove the four Phillips bolts that you have here very easily. Boom, this, no longer used, goes in the trash. Then you'll wanna take off your factory wheel and chain. And this is gonna give us the room that we need to work to drill and mount your new brake caliper bracket. We're gonna need a 16 millimeter open end wrench or a 16 millimeter socket. I prefer to use the socket on a gun because normally the axle bolt is very tight and it takes a lot of force to remove it. So I tend to like to use the guns. Now I've removed one axle nut, which is all you'll need to remove. I take off the lock washer, the flat washer, and I go ahead and push the axle bolt out of the other side. Rest the axle bolt aside. I will have two spacers, one on this side, one on this side. They are both the same size, so it doesn't matter which side they end up on. When I reinstall, I keep track of these and I put them to the side nice and neat so I don't lose anything. You'll wanna rest your hand on the chain and lightly guide it over the gear. Now your wheel half is removed or from the fork. Now once you've removed the wheel, you'll wanna remove the chain. So slide it off the motor's gear and now you've got your chain loose and you can set this aside as well. Guys, we can't stress enough how when you install this kit, you definitely need to look into purchasing our XL upgraded fork. The factory fork only lasts so long. You may be able to install the kit and continue riding, but I'm almost certain your factory fork is gonna fail in a short amount of time when you're using the brakes on it. We highly suggest you purchase this in conjunction with the brake kit to install the brakes because this is gonna give you longevity of the cart. So be sure to check this out on the website. This is our XL upgraded fork. It is incredibly strong and it also comes pre-drilled for the brake kit so you don't have any drill or fabrication work involved with the install. Step four, we're going to be taking our brake caliper bracket and we're going to be marking the holes that are going to be drilled into this XL fork so we can now run our hardware through the fork and tie this bracket to it. So you will first turn your XL fork to the side where the back of the motor is. And this is the side where we'll be mounting the XL brake caliper bracket. Guide this edge so it's lined up with the existing edge of your XL fork. Now, as you see, it can go up, it can go down. What we do is we drop it to the bottom to where this is hitting the cylindrical portion of the bottom of the neck. And then we line up this edge with our bracket here. So that way you don't have to worry about the alignment of where this is gonna end up. These are your alignment points. You can take a center punch and you can transfer your holes that you'll need to drill through this. So as you see here, 
I've center punched that. I'm just checking my alignment again. I'm doing the same here. Obviously our center punch is a bit temperamental here today, but it's still getting the job done. Same thing, boom. Now I'm just confirming all of those look roughly pretty accurate. Step five, we've got our XL fork marks and we're going to take a quarter inch drill bit and we're going to drill the holes that we've marked on the XL fork. But always wear your safety glasses. Ooh, caught me. So line up your quarter inch drill bit to one of those pre-punched holes. Start your drill. Go ahead and put some downward force on it and drill through the first top layer. And then try to keep the drill bit pretty square. Don't go off axis or crooked. And you'll get a nice clean drill through the top all the way through. And what I like to do is after I've drilled the first hole, I still like to confirm that my other two holes do look centered in these two holes. So what I do is I clear the shavings out of the way, I line this back up over it, and I can see, okay, that hole is still perfectly centered. That one is, this punch mark looks to be a little inward. So what I may just do is just re-punch it a little bit more to where I see that it actually needs to be, and I'll go from there. And so I can see that it was just a little bit lower. Obviously my punch is being temperamental today. Same thing as before, start off nice and easy. Apply some downward pressure, get through the first layer, speed up the drill a little bit, keep your drill bit nice and straight so you don't snap it, and boom, if you look through those two holes from the top, you can see that those are in perfect alignment with what I've marked, and the edge here is aligned, and the bottom here is bottomed out on the cylinder piece. Same thing as before. Drill with some downward pressure. Get through that first layer. Keep the drill bit nice and straight. Speed up a bit and voila. You now have three holes in your XL fork to mount your new brake kit. Once you've drilled your holes, you'll want to deburr the surface so that way there's no sharp edges. We have a nice deburring tool that uses a countersink that we can spin by hand. If not, you can put a countersink on your drill bit and you can drill it with a countersink a little bit and clean up those edges. Or just simply grab some sandpaper and sand the edges until they're smooth. So we do the top side and then the other side we also deburr as well because we will have hardware on the inside here. And as, as you see, this has the most amount of metal shavings that need to be deburred. And as you can see, it's a little tough with this tool just simply because it doesn't like to fit in here perfectly, but you can see I can still use it off axis and get pretty good results. Right, now each surface is smooth and ready for install. So when you open up your kit, you'll see that you have three gold 10 millimeter bolts and three 10 millimeter nuts. And you'll see that we also have some M6 washers here. And the way these get installed is a little different than the normal way. Most people would think you put the washer here and you bolt it down, but in fact, we're actually using the washer as a spacer. So the washers we actually take to the top surface of the XL fork and we rest the washers over those holes. And the reason why we put these here, if we were to simply bolt this bracket to this surface, these welds right here are not a flat surface. So when we bolt the bracket down, it would tilt over these welds. When we add these washers here, it creates a spacer that we can now space this off of and guarantee that this is sitting perfectly flat on top of the XL fork. So as you see, I've rest my, my spacers on top. and run one bolt through, I grab the second, slide it through, and I grab the third and slide it through. And we can go ahead and hand tighten our 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom of these bolts. And before you fully tighten it, obviously you do wanna make sure that your alignment is good here and it's touching this point as we spoke about earlier in the video. So you'll need a 10 millimeter open end wrench and a 10 millimeter socket. Hold the lower nut with an open end wrench, put it on tighten mode and go ahead and snug it up, snug it up, snug it up, and then go ahead and give it a good tighten. 
And now the bracket is installed on the XL4. Now the seventh step involves just removing your factory rim halves. You'll need an eight millimeter socket so you can remove the gear bolts. And then you'll need a five millimeter Allen key to remove the wheel halves. We remove these factory eight mil bolts. <coughs> Pay attention, there is a lock washer on the bottom of these and we like to keep those with those. Now the gear comes off all as one. Now, before you remove these five millimeter bolts, you need to make sure you let the air out of the wheel. Major caution. Yeah, here. we've seen people remove these and they just shoot off to the moon if they don't remove the air. Breed. So we've got our five millimeter Allen key, put it on the gun, go ahead and unscrew your, five, your four bolts. Now we've got one rim half. We've got our factory tire, which we no longer are gonna use because we like to use our taxi garage tires, not this factory junk. Hello. We are not gonna be using this half anymore because we have the half that we need that holds the gear. But now we need the rim half that holds the rotor on the opposite side. And of course, that's what we do here in-house is we make the rim half with the rotor pre-assembled. So all you have to do is put your tire back on and reinstall everything just as you saw. We have our knobby tire from Taxi Garage, and we like to make sure that we put the air side now where the gear side was because it is much easier to manage filling this with air by simply removing the gear or, you know, fishing in your air chuck behind the gear when you're working on your cart. So we like to go ahead and align this with the opening. We like to use the factory axle bolt as an alignment tool, slide it through the gear side rim half, slide the center spacer on, hold everything on with one finger, and guide it into that lower bearing into the other rim half. And then as you're dropping this down, you will need to kind of fish the actual air piece through the rim half. And now that everything is aligned and the axle bolt is sitting there nice, we can go ahead and take our four five millimeter Allen key bolts and we can just go ahead and rest them in their holes and get them ready to be reinstalled. Got my gun again. And of course, as I'm tightening these, you want to do it sequentially. You don't want to tighten all, one side all at once. You do want to gently guide every side down evenly. So as you can see there, I've bottomed out. Now I'm going to start snugging them up because I know the wheel half is seated completely. Now once I've got that tight, I can go ahead and pick it up, slide the axle bolt out and set it to the side. And now we know that when we installed everything, everything was aligned. Now before we put the gear on, you wanna make sure that you fill your tire with air because I can't tell you how many times I've put it together and I've had to take it back apart because I forgot to fill it with air. We have our handy little air pump here that with is gonna help change. us. Let me see that quick yeah, this little quick change I found on Amazon. So much easier than screwing it on and off, you know? Yeah. Get yourself a little quick change air tool and you can go ahead and really fill your tires much faster than you would if you were threading on the piece manually. So we like to set our knobby tires to about 60 PSI or lower than that. Anywhere between 45 and 60 PSI we found we've got really good results. Ooh, she get me tight. Everything's filled with air. Put a nice little cap on this and we're going to put our nice new cap on top of this valve stem. That's ready to go. Now we grab our gear and go ahead and reinstall the gear the same way we removed it. Grab your three eight millimeter bolts with their existing lock washers and go ahead and hand thread them into the wheel. Then like before, we grab our eight millimeter socket and we don't want to tighten these completely. We just want to snug them up just so everything gets its thread starts. And then once we realize everything's nice and snug and go ahead and finish tightening the three bolts. And you don't want to blast these three because we have seen customers really send it on these and they snap and then they either have to buy a new wheel half or extract the bolt. So just be careful when you're tightening these three bolts not to over torque them. And now your rim has our brake rotor. It's a handsome wheel. Shout out to Smartly for keeping me stay puffed on the job. We're filming our install video and we're both sweating. Why? We can still use them while we film. But we're sweating back here. It's Florida, it's hot. Let's see, I'm, I'm sweating. I gotta take my hat off. Whew. These will last seven hours during the day. If we put on the low setting, I've had this last all day at work, like seven hours. We yeah, really do great. We really do, we really do love them. Step eight, we're going to grab our XL fork that we already installed the brake bracket on, and we're going to reinstall our chain and our new 
wheel setup. I like to lay them down the way we had them earlier in the video where the tensioner is facing towards me. And now I have a little trick that makes life easier. I like to remove the spring from the tensioner. So when I go ahead and put everything together, there's no tension fighting me on the chain. As I grab the chain that we removed and I slide it up under the tensioner, and I guide it onto the top gear of the motor. And go ahead and start to align my wheel half, or my rims as set up now, back onto the chain. And now you can see the chain has plenty of slack and it'll allow me to go ahead and put those spacers back in and align the axle bolt much easier than if I had to have this still tensioned, it would be pulling the wheel up. You're going to want to take your axle bolt, and I like to start on the side that has the gear on it, and I like to fish in the spacer from there, and I lift up the XL fork. So you slide your axle bolt through the one spacer. My other spacer's sitting here. Now, it does get kind of tricky because that spacer earlier that we reinstalled between the two wheel halves doesn't always sit centered for you to slide this bolt immediately back through. So what we have is we either use a Bic pen or we use a pick. And I'm gonna show you the technique to use a Bic pen today because I believe it's the easier way that most people will have laying around. So you wanna grab a Bic pen or any pen that's similar to this size and shape, and it has this nice tapered edge to it. And what we use this for is to slide this in, obviously at the lowest point of gravity, which gravity's pushing down this way, so we know the spacer is gonna be sitting at the lower edge here. And we're gonna try to pick the spacer up with this tip and lift it up so we can jiggle this bolt through the other side. So I slide it in, I can kind of feel that center spacer, I've wiggled it up there now, and now, at that my axle bolt slides through nearly effortlessly so that should make it a lot easier for a lot of people you put your flat washer back on you put your crush washer back on and you put your other axle bolt nut back on and you'll find your 16 millimeter socket again and tighten your axle bolt just to give it a nice little even torque on both sides so as I was talking about earlier that this is still loose now the trick that I have for reinstalling these is you can use a long screwdriver or just a little pick and if you fish behind the tensioner you'll find that you can pry up the spring and rest it back on the tensioner after installing everything. When you realize how easy this is to do you will love doing tire changes on your cart now. Step nine, we're going to take the brake caliper that's included in your kit and we're going to remove the spacer that holds the brake pads on each side. And then we will go ahead and make it so the cable is pointing up. We can slide this to the other side to make our life easy. And we can go ahead and guide the caliper over the rotor and line it up with the holes on the bracket. And you'll find with your kit, we have a bag of eight millimeter bolts, two bolts and two nuts. And the bolt goes just like this with the washer underneath it. Slide it through, same thing here. And then you'll take your eight millimeter nuts and you'll go ahead and install them onto the bottom of these eight millimeter bolts. And then I lightly tighten them by hand, gently guide my eight millimeter bolt into the threads of the eight millimeter nut. And now I can see that this is sitting here nice and snug. Tighten these up just so they're just snug. Right, so they're snug right now. And one thing we wanna do is we wanna look inside the caliper and we wanna see where the rotor is hitting and where it isn't. And what you wanna do is you wanna have it to where the wheel spins pretty easily. So right now what we've got here is a little bit of dragging sensation. So what I can see is that it looks like it needs to slide this way a little bit. And this has adjustability up and down and left and right. So this just takes a little bit of going back and forth, loosening it, sliding it over now, and then retightening it with it slid over. So as you'll see, I'm going to slide it over before I tighten it. We've got that one slid over. And now I'm going to look at this and align it with the rotor. It's down. And I'm going to check. Okay, so I still have some resistance there. Sounds like I didn't get it slid over enough. So we're going to loosen up just one side now. So that way we can kind of manipulate just one side at a time and then go ahead and tighten that one side back down. And now see where we're at. So we're still getting some resistance and this is good to show on film so we can show everyone how to properly adjust this. And if you look in here, you can see now the rotor is kind of sitting far to this side. So what I'm going to do is loosen the top one just lightly. And as I said, at this point, we're only doing one side at a time so we can try to align both edges to be centered with the rotor. Go ahead and tighten it back up. 
And now we have minimal brake drag. And as you can see, the wheel spins very easily with very little drag on the brake. And even if you do have a little bit of drag on the brake, trust me, it's not gonna affect your performance. As long as it's not stopping the wheel when you're spinning it like this as we're showing you on film, you're not gonna have any issues. And we'll give it a squeeze to test the kit. When I squeeze this cable here, you can see the caliper is pushing against the brake pads, locking it against the rotor. And as you can see, I can no longer move the wheel. And then I release, and of course, the wheel is back to being easily moved again. Step 10, remember this cage ball bearing set that we removed from the neck earlier? Well, you're gonna wanna install this back on the fork. Now pay attention, there is a direction that it needs to go. This is actually the side that needs to be facing down and where the balls are, they need to be facing up. You go ahead, let go of it, let it fall right on that race right there and now your neck is ready to be reinstalled on your XL chassis. So to do that, I've got the cable kind of wound up right here. The main goal is to lift this up, slide this into here, and get everything into, into the chassis. And before you drop the chassis onto these balls, as you see right here, you do want to make sure that they are aligned evenly so that way they get seated perfectly here. If you drop the chassis onto this and the balls are still kind of hanging out the side and you go to tighten your nuts, you're going to damage your headset bearings. So do be sure to check here with your fingers and with your eyes that the balls are seated correctly. So once the fork is seated into the chassis, all the cables that are still sitting underneath the cart, you're going to want to go ahead and Pull your cables back through to the top, get that brake caliper lever sitting on top of the chassis and out of the way. Then you're going to take your motor wiring and you're going to pull that up as well and get that under the neck here. Actually, it goes around to this side. So this is why we're fishing all this through before we tighten everything up. Your factory nuts that lock and adjust your headset, you're going to want to reinstall. Obviously the larger one with the race on the bottom of it goes first. And do be sure that your bearing did not fall out of your fork. You do need to make sure this bearing is in the top side of your chassis when you're going to put this nut onto it. And then of course, it should thread, thread on almost effortlessly. And then you do kind of need to wiggle this so it's aligned. And then once it gets aligned, you can start to feel that it spins very easily. The neck that is, and the nut starts to get snug against the lower part of the chassis. And now you can see I have no play side to side within these two bearing spots and the nut is snug. I'm going to take my smaller nut, snug it up against the other nut. In case you don't have a proper set of headset tools, you can watch one of our videos on YouTube that shows how to do this with regular open end wrenches. Currently, this is how we do it now. We have these 36 millimeter open end wrenches here that are bike tools. We spin the neck completely clockwise until it no longer spins. And we use this one on the lower nut and this one on the upper nut. And we hold this one completely still while tightening the top one. And then once that's snug, then we go ahead and back this lower one off up against it, try to wedge them up against each other. And as you can hear, my voice straining, I did put a lot of force into that. And the one thing you wanna check is that, does your fork spin very smooth and easily? Yes, it does now that I've adjusted it correctly. And then you wanna wiggle the chassis and see, does your fork flop back and forth? Well, then you probably didn't adjust it right. right. So that's another quick way to check, is to wiggle the chassis and feel if this part is wiggling. Step 11. This one, we're going to turn the cart around so you guys have a really good view on what we're going to do to set the cable length and the motor length. So they're both routed in a way to where the fork can still spin 180 degrees, just like a factory crazy cart should. You guys can get a good view of this side. So if you look in your kit, you'll find that you have a couple of these long bolt ones with these clamps on them. All right, we'll put them in the same orientation so you guys can see them. You have one loose one with just a small four millimeter Allen. And then you'll see we have two of these clamps here with 10 mils that are the same length with 10 mil nuts. The first one we're going to start with is this one. And the reason why we're starting with this one is because this one is a special clamp that actually grabs the hose and stops it from sliding. This is the first one. Not this one. Do not confuse it with this one. This one has a complete rubber edge. This is not the first clamp. This with the double rubber edge with metal in the middle is the first one you need to use. 
Before mounting your hydraulic brake cable to your crazy car, you want to pay attention to the way the cable is actually coming off of the caliper after you've loosely mounted it. So, from here, if I simply just take the cable and try to put the clamp here, you'll notice the cable is actually not resting against the fork here. That is not correct. That is not what we want. This orientation would not work when we go to set the length on the steering wheel. So what you need to do is take the bundle as it's wrapped up, rotate it counterclockwise, one full rotation. Rotation. From there, you grab the cable and you'll clamp it there, just like shown here. And what you'll notice, one key factor, is that the cable is now resting on the edge of the fork. And from here, you can go ahead and grab your mount kit and clamp this and lock it into the stanchion. And you'll see, when I go to spin it with the cable resting against the fork, the cable never comes back into contact with the fork and gets stuck. So making sure that your cable is oriented this way before mounting it is crucial to get full steering ability out of the cart with the brake kit installed. So you're gonna go ahead and unscrew your eight millimeter nut, remove the lock washer, remove the washer, and remove the clamp. Now we'll come back over to the chassis and we're going to take our brake caliper hose and we're going to slide this clamp into that hose. From there, you will take your bolt and you will slide it through the clamp now. You'll move your wiring harness out of the way, slide this through the first hole on the chassis here. And once you get it through to the other side, you will take your washer, slide your crush washer on, and you'll slide your eight millimeter acorn nut on the other side and hand tighten it all. That is your first hose clamp routed. The next clamp you want to use is the one with the complete rubber coating on the hose clamp area. So just like before, you'll remove your acorn 8 mil nut, the lock washer and the flat washer, and remove the hose clamp. And I'm going to slide the clamp over the hose and slide it down to the second to the lowest position on this stanchion is what we call it here and I'm going to slide the bolt in and get it through to the other side. I'm going to take my flat washer, slide it onto the other side, take my lock washer, slide it onto the other side, and my acorn eight mil nut, slide it on over there and thread it on by hand. The third clamp you'll need is the same style clamp and it had the loose bolt with the loose washer. This is a four millimeter Allen and this is your clamp that you're going to use for this threaded hole on the factory XL chassis. Got your clamp, open it up a little bit, slide the hose over it. I actually like to run it coming from this direction. Clip the hose into the clamp, go ahead and run it down to this lower threaded hole, squeeze it so it's a little bit less tall so you can thread this bolt through. Thread it in by hand. Now as you see with this step, we haven't tightened or located any of these cables to where they need to be. Right now that we've got the three of these locked in and they're not fully tight, we're going to set the cable length so that way the cable doesn't interfere with either the stanchion or the fork as we make a complete turn. So we're going to take the factory motor wiring and we're going to run this down back where it was, just from factory, slide it back through this opening. All of that's good and dandy. And now, since we use this clamp first, this clamp actually, when tightened, doesn't allow this to slide forward or backwards. So once we set the amount of cable that's past this, it stays that way. The reason why we have these ones down here is because they do not hold the cable in its exact spot and they give it free motion. So this is how we found that it works best on the crazy card. So once you have all three of these lightly bolted up, you're going to go ahead and with a three millimeter Allen, line it up with that bolt, take your eight millimeter open end Allen and begin to snug this section up. And as you saw there, it is snug, it rotated, but we do want it facing down in that position. So when I tighten it or just snug it up, it needs to at least stay in that position. So as you can see, I'm using the other side of the wrench to help myself snug it up and line this to where it's nice and parallel with the stanchion here. We wanna spin the fork 180 degrees backwards and 180 degrees forwards. And we wanna watch this cable to see if it's interfering with anything. And you can see it's kind of rubbing on the front here as I spin it. And what that would indicate to me is that the cable 
is just a little bit too long. So from here, I keep my finger resting here and I pull the cable back just a little bit. And as you just saw, this cable just slid back from here just a hair. And now when I come up to the front, hopefully I won't be rubbing as much. And as you see, I still am. So it looks as though I need to remove a little more length from the front portion of the cable. So just as before, I'm going to grab this end of the cable. I'm going to pull, make it shorter, and now check the front again. Ooh, look at that. What do we have there? No more interference on that front part. And then when we come to a complete 180, what does it do? It just hits the stopper and comes right back. Now, as we rotate back around, boom, 180 degrees, no interference. Coming back to the front, testing the front again, no interference. So this cable length is now set to where it does not interfere with anything and I can go ahead and tighten this section down. Now to avoid changing how it's set, you just want to hold the three mil still and you want to tighten the eight mil nut from the other side. That way this doesn't rotate or change too much. As you just saw as I was ch doing it, it did just kind of rotate on me. So I am just gonna kind of put my hand here and hold it still and snug up this eight mil nut. Then from there, I can go ahead and just tighten this one because like I said before, the cable is loose in this one. Even when this one is tight, this is just a guide. This one is a clamp. So as I showed before, just kind of get it snug, then Go ahead and tighten the eight mil with your open end. The last one, or third to last, because there are five clamps, we have this bolt, which we saw earlier is a four millimeter Allen, and it gets tightened down completely. And of course, to avoid spinning it, I rest my hand on it, and I fully tighten it. Now, the front portion of the cable is set. The only other portion that we still need to adjust the length for and set it is the motor harness. So in the kit, you'll see that we've supplied some zip ties. These zip ties are to set the length of the motor wiring while attaching it to the hydraulic cable. So the first thing we're gonna do is spin the fork 180 degrees clockwise, and when we get that length, we're gonna pull it kinda tight, not super tight, just enough to where it's lined up parallel with the hydraulic hose, and we're going to slide a zip tie over it and snug it up just gently, right? So now we've got one, and we grab our second zip tie and go ahead and come to the back side of that clamp and go ahead and snug it up just gently. Now we're gonna pull this a bit tighter, and we're going to lock down these zip ties. And of course, we like to flush cut these zip ties so they don't stab you with their little tips. And we like to hide them to keep for a nice clean install. So I rotate them backwards, keep them nice and clean. Now, when we spin the motor with the neck, we can see that the wiring harness does not interfere with anything and the brake hydraulic cable does not interfere with anything. So from here, we've actually set the cable length and the motor wiring length and we like to just add another zip tie right to the front of it just to give it a little bit of extra support. It's about one inch from the back of this one and we snip it and now we've got our cable length set. As you can see, everything is working beautifully in unison together, and there is no interference with either of the cables wrapping around the factory XL fork. So the last zip tie goes on the bottom part where the throttle harness, the hydraulic cable, and the motor harness all meet, and we like to run one zip tie on that to tie all of those together as well. And of course, we flush cut it with our snips, and then we Roll it back so it's nice and neat. Step 12, everybody. The last couple steps are mounting your brake caliper lever to your factory drift bar. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is remove this factory grip. I like to grab it with both hands and twist it. And once I feel that it's started to spin, you can see the whole body of it is starting to spin. I like to put my hands underneath the lower section, glide it up and it comes right off. A lot of people, they pull it like this. And if you've ever played with a Chinese finger trap when you were a kid, that actually stretches it and causes it to squeeze tighter on this. Spin it first, grab from the bottom and slide it up from the bottom and it will uncompress it from gripping onto this. 
and you'll want to unravel the cable to where it's in a nice, smooth, straight line. Now, it's, if it's obviously bundled up like this, you're already starting off with, this, with issues for this next step. So unravel it, slide it under here, then go ahead, guide this down onto your drift bar. And you'll see that if everything looks right, the cable's sitting nice, sitting flat. Now, if you see the cable is sitting up like this, well, then that might mean that you need to spin this just a little more to get the cable to sit flat. So now if you see how I have it, the cable is sitting flatter, and when I drill holes to mount our last two clamps onto these two spots where my pointer finger is and my thumb over here, it will actually hold the cable flat against the chassis and will allow me to clamp this down nice and straight and forward onto the drift bar. To mount those last two clamps, you're going to look back at your hardware kit and you're going to find that we have these last two clamps ready to be mounted. And just as before, we have a clamp with two rubber ends and metal in the middle, and we have a clamp with a complete rubber end. The complete rubber end clamp is going to be the clamp closest to the battery box, so that's gonna be used there. And the double-edged rubber clamp is going to be used furthest from the battery box over here on this side. And as you've already noticed, you can see there's no holes here and we're gonna to need to mark and drill those holes. This clamp goes over this hose on this side. And where you wanna mark it is where, if I pull this down here and I marked and drilled this spot here where you can see the cable's now resting against the battery box and we don't really want that. So what we want is we wanna scoot this a little forward so that way when it gets clamped, the cable isn't resting on the battery box. So right around there would be a good spot. And one thing you wanna be mindful of since we're drilling holes through the chassis is that if you have an existing LED kit running underneath your chassis, make sure your LED kit with your hands check underneath your car and make sure where you're drilling isn't going to drill through your LED kit. But of course, as we did before, marking the spot to drill, we take our punch, give it a nice little punch right there and you've got your little mark where you need to drill and just like before we have our quarter inch drill bit and we will go ahead and drill through and hold your cable out of the way obviously you do not want your cable getting caught into this and you know we kind of have to hold the drill a little differently there we go so now you can see it in the shot blow the shards out of the way and we've got our trusty deburring tool that we're going to set inside the hole and spin a couple spins, deburr that hole. Same thing from the underside. I'm going to lift the cart just a little bit, stick my deburring tool in that hole, spin it around and touch it with my finger and I can confirm that there are no metal shavings blocking me from setting these clamps down. So same thing, I'm going to set my 10 mil, grab my 10 millimeter nut, reach around the bottom of the chassis, and go ahead and just put it on hand tight. We aren't going to be tightening these yet because we still have the other clamp to mount. So now that you've got this clamp mounted, what I like to do is keep things uniform. I really like to choose a spot that's in alignment with the previous hose clamp. Just as the other one is mounted, we take our hose clamp and like I showed you before, this is the hose clamp with the double rubber ends here. This is the one that you need to use at the ending here. So I squeeze it open, slide the hose into the clamp, squeeze the clamp back closed, and I go ahead and align it with where this hole is just visually. And I take my punch and make a mark. All right, the punch has now left me a little indent of where I need to drill, and I'm going to drill through the chassis. The chassis is really thin metal. Shouldn't take much effort to drill through. Just as before, we're going to deburr that hole from top side, and I'm going to tilt the chassis up, just gently, and deburr it from the bottom side. Check with my finger, everything's nice and smooth. Slide the bolt through, hand tight the 10 millimeter nut on the bottom of the clamp, and voila, this looks very aesthetically pleasing. Step 13, we're gonna be tightening our clamps here. We're gonna be setting the length and the height that the brake handle sits at on the drift bar. So grab your 10 mil, go ahead and snug that up. We've got that nice and tight. Now, the way I set the depth on this is I reinstall the grip, just sliding it back on with my hand. Boom, you really want it up here, so that way when your hand's here, it's a very easy grab to go ahead and tighten it. This takes a five millimeter Allen to go ahead and tighten the bolt that locks this onto your drift bar. Butt this up against the drift bar handle and gently snug that up. 
Check that it's tight. Feels great already. Ooh, that feels great. All right, everyone, step 14, we're almost done. We just have to reinstall our motor harness clip and our factory seat and factory steering wheel. Take your motor harness plug and find that yellow and blue wire connector and reconnect your motor wiring harness. Seat's going back on. And all we did was remove the bolts from these two swivel hinge points. And we have our two bolts that are five millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and clip the seat in into the back. And that helps you have the front holes nicely aligned so you're not fiddling with the seat. So I hand thread in one bolt on one side and I take my other bolt, slide it through, wiggle the seat until I can hand thread that side in. I grab my five millimeter Allen key and I like to use the extended version of this one because it is a bit easier to use the gun on this. I snug it up and do the same thing. Nice and snug. And check that it's working fine. Factory seats back together. Last thing to do is slide your XL steering wheel back into the factory fork. And of course the XL steering wheel has a keyway that lines up with the keyway in this fork. So you'll want to line those up nice and good. Grab a six millimeter Allen key and go ahead and blast this one because that's what keeps it tight in the neck. Ooh, that feels great. And step 15 everyone, it's time to look over the cart check all the nuts and bolts that we just installed and confirm everything is nice and tight before we send it. So look over the cart, make sure your steering wheel's nice and tight, make sure your fork headset is properly adjusted. Come over and just double check and confirm your cables aren't interfering and nothing has changed. So steer it 180 degrees clockwise, 180 degrees counterclockwise and confirm that none of the cables stop the fork from turning. Confirm that your seat does open and close and it is safely resecured and confirm that all the cables and all the mounts are turn, properly secured. Turn on, give her a buzz. I think she's going to sound the same, but at least she's going to stop immediately, right? You all ready to see this? Wow. Cool. So, looks like we're ready to send it. What's up everybody? The Brain Kit works. Come check it out. There's a whole bunch of amazing new ways to use the crazy cart now that it has brakes. One of them is it gives you immediate big angle. Another way is that you can just come to a safe stop and not get run over by a car now. Immediate response. You gotta love hydraulic brakes. Let's go! attack. What's on the back of there? I'm Steve from Taxi Garage. We brought you the brakes. Check it out with us now, live on the website. Check the YouTube, check the Instagram. All the new guys are getting this kit. It's the best beans out for the XL Crazy Card. <laughs> Sus boy. <laughs>